Um, so you're 20 years old. We just found that out. Uh-huh. I love that. I love that you're She's not like 21. Very mature. You're very. I'm sorry. We're yes. not like talking down to you. <laughs> you're a grown ass woman. Of course. <laughs> we're talking all about you and your life. Well, you've just done so much already at yeah. 20, which is just wow. just crazy. I mean, to have 14 million. What does it feel like to have 14 million followers? Tell us. Tell us, girls who've <laughs> been have. working since we were two years old, <laughs> who don't have any kind of following like that. What it's like? Is there pressure? What does it feel like? It's scary to have that many people. I kind of don't think about it on a day to day. I'm like, oh, this is my account. But then when I really think about it, 14 million people is a lot of people perceiving me Mm -hmm. and a lot of people watching my content and kind of following with what I'm doing. So it does freak me out sometimes, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. I just want to keep them happy and like keep posting content because I do like it. Yeah. But it's very like heartwarming to me to know that that many people are interested in what I have to say. I'm Mm -hmm. like, I just used to be sitting in my room making videos and now there's 14 million people being like, what's she gonna post today? Right, right. Well, yeah, what I a feel responsibility. Like they're like waiting for her. Of course mm-hmm. they you're are, the pressure. Of their, you're a part of their like life, you know? And mm-hmm. everything that you post gives them so much joy. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, no I pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> they are waiting on you though. But I love yeah. like knowing that somebody from behind their phone screen might see my video and like it might make their day or it might make them a little bit happier than what they were before. Mm -hmm. It's just fun to me that I can reach so many people in the world just by posting a video off of my phone, like locally, so many people can see it and be like, I love this and I love this girl and I'm gonna follow her. Yes, I think because they're seeing you at your absolute most genuine raw self. Mm-hmm. And you're you are quite unique, you know, your emo style and vibe. Oh, emo you. style. Let's talk, about let's, emo talk, style. let's talk about emo style. Let's talk about your shirt. Where'd you goth? How dare you point at me? First of all, it's rude to point. I don't know if you, you guys can't see this, but Christy's pointing at me right now. Pointing at you. <laughs> you. Wait, what? What? I didn't even. Know you had a goth phase. I had a goth phase. Do yeah. we have pictures of that? Uh, maybe. Oh, I don't. I, I hope not. Get into that another I day. hope not. I did a so goth that Disney when I auditioned for um, that's a Raven. Um, they they were like no no no, and they did a screen test and dyed my hair and everything so I'd look like Disney esque. Mm. Now that wouldn't fly. Now you can really be who you who you are. Wait, you know, Emo wouldn't give be you scary. red hair. No, I had red hair, but I had like bangs and I was like like black, black eye makeup, black lipstick, like just goth, like Hot Topic. Do they mm-hmm. still have yes. Hot Topic? I love that I'm yes, asking Yes, I love Hot Topic. It's emo. All the graphic tees, it is. It's yes. very emo, but I love it. Yeah, I, hot, to- hot Topic seems so you. But you have so many brands offering you things now, like the shirt you're wearing. What's what, what are you wearing right now? This is Darker Waves. I actually did buy this. A lot of the things I end up getting myself because I'm very specific about what I like and I've been trying to like nail my aesthetic. Uh-huh. For a while, but yeah. this one's new. Nailed Very it. Fun. Pun intended. <laughs> it There's like be, nails in her shirt. It has Literally. to be hard to nail your aesthetic when there are so many to choose from. Yes. And and the pressure of you having an aesthetic must be very, uh, it must be hard. Like having to kind of be like, okay. Or, or let me ask you this. Do you feel like your fan base is forgiving in that? Okay, this isn't working so mm. much. So have you, is there a learning curve to the content that you make? Mm. Can I ask you where, where do you live? What's your address? Tell us right now. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like in Beverly Hills, right on the city limit. Oh, you are. Barely made it in. Now we know where she is. (laughs) And is that where you're from? No, I'm from Virginia. That's right. Originally. I remember. Where in Virginia? It's called Centerville. No one ever hears of it. It's like 45 minutes from D.C. Okay. So it was a a cute little drive to D.C., but there's kind of nothing in Centerville. (laughs) Oh, really? It's empty, yeah. But it's not like Southern Virginia. It gets very rural down there. A lot of farms and like lake houses. I was more in the suburban city part, Mm -hmm. but- DC suburbs. It still was a culture shock going across the coast. I was like, this is not Virginia for sure. I I used to date a guy in Roanoke. Roanoke? Okay, I know where that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've been there to, and I've, actually I'm going to Virginia soon to do this, uh, to do a concert. (laughs) Plug. Like, make it about you. No, but I do want to know, what are you doing? I'm doing the Disney Princess concert Yay! again. Um, yeah, the Disney Princess concert in Virginia. And I- um, They're so lucky to have you. I know, they really <laughs> You're are. such an asset. I know, I am. Um, <laughs> wait, back to <laughs> back to Bailey. I was going to ask, oh, so 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 Bailey's d- d- debut song is Romance is Dead. Mm-hmm. But yes. she, and it was released back in April. And her second song, Runner Up, is set for, can I say this now? Is it too early for a plug? It's out. It's out, right? Yes. <laughs> Like, am I crazy? <laughs> Why does it feel? Like, I'm telling. I'm. It's, it's terrible. It's what, awesome song. Why does it feel like it's never enough? That is it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. I'm not singing it. It's so catchy. It's so catchy. I, know, I love I'm it. I'm so awkward about like singing it in front of people. Still, I don't know why. I'm like fine in a studio, but like when it comes out or when people sing or like play my own mu- music back to me, I'm like. It's okay. terrifying. That's yeah. like when actors watch their uh, yeah. feet, their playback with their, you know, self tapes or anything. Anything. Yeah, it's I so can't. cringy. It's so cringy. You never get over it. You I know? never watch my old TikToks back either. I'm like, oh God, 
Cringe. Yeah, I kind of want to see myself. What was the transition from your TikToks, from these vids, into music? Who came up to you, or how did you realize that you were so... I, I actually heard you doing an interview about this recently, but I kind of want to hear your fresh take here. It was mostly me. I always really loved music growing up. I was a big musical theater kid. <gasps> oh, that's right. I remember singing. you saying that, yes. You're yeah. a musical theater kid? I was. I we see saw you. Phantom of the Opera. I saw Mean Girls in like the third row, and I was... Did you see Renee Rapp? No, I oh, saw I'm someone else. I love Renee, but it was someone else and it was Queens, incredible. Queens. It was so good. And <laughs> I was always obsessed with Broadway and I'd go home after school and like sing in my room on an app called Smule Karaoke. Oh, and you could them. record like tracks and post them. Mm -hmm. And I played a lot of instruments as a kid. Oh, I yeah? started with a viola. And then I moved on to the flute, and then I moved on to the trombone. Ooh, and then I those are like very different, <laughs> awesome yeah, yeah, instruments. Very yeah. different. And so let me ask you this, because my daughter's trying to like learn piano, and it's so hard to get her to get into it. But I know she likes it. Mm -hmm. I'm not pushing it down her throat, but I do want her to have. <laughs> I do want her to have some appreciation for an instrument if right. she'd like it right. and learn how to breathe until music. She, mm -hmm. Until until she tells me I, I don't like this, mommy. Absolutely, and I'll ask her. I oh, know this is triggering, but what <laughs> what I am asking though is, how did you know that you wanted to pick up these instruments? Is there something inside you telling you like, mm. hey Bailey, like this is this is for you? It was always like very intriguing to me. I just think it is so cool when someone can pick up an instrument and just like create something beautiful out of thin air. Mm -hmm. And so <gasps> that was taught? always very interesting to me. And I didn't stick around. I was pretty good at the trombone, mm. but I started playing the ukulele and then I moved on to the electric guitar, Ooh. which is really fun. That is a learning curve, especially at an adult age, trying to pick up a guitar because mm -hmm. when you're a kid and you can like go home and just play it after school and you've Nothing to do. It ends up being muscle memory. But right. now I'm like, I have to learn this and teach myself while still doing my own job. So it's difficult. But and I just love instruments. It, it's something like I always felt like I was a little bit musically inclined. Mm -hmm. I was always pretty good when I picked them up. It was never like the worst thing you've ever heard in your life. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Are your is, are your parents musical? No, literally no one in my family is musical, so I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> I love that. I love how unique, how special. Yeah, you're the artist of the fam. Yes. Yeah, they always the, made fun of my sister. The emo artist. Yes. By the way, I do want to mention emo because emo is a part of, it's like a pillar of your content. That's mm -hmm. something that like she leans into. Mm -hmm. And it's also part of her aesthetic and a part of what's happening. In the zeitgeist right now of our... Uh, you know, our world, emo has come back. Blink-182 is back, mm -hmm. um, yes. like on tour. If you didn't know everybody, she's Blink pregnant. <laughs> what? Uh, so Bailey Spins I pregnant? No, I know, you heard so, it here I know first. what you're talking about. I saw that video. <laughs> Courtney <laughs> Kardashian held up a huge sign. It was a call oh, back to one of their yeah, early music yeah, videos. And yeah. she's like, Travis, I'm pregnant. And I thought it was it a was fun so callback. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was way. adorable. A lot of people are coming down on her for it because they thought it was very pick me. Pick me is where it's like, pick me, pick me. And so they call it pick me and they thought it was husband. a little much like trying to get attention when it was like, I don't know. I think Every it's just a, a little much with all the kids. That's what I think is a little bit much. <laughs> You're like, not too many kids. general. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of kids. If, lot, if lot you of... don't want much, don't marry a Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. Good point. But it was cute. And emo in general, I know that there's like a whole, like uh, it wasn't a phase thing. Mm -hmm. And that's like a callback to like our generation. So what I'm interested in is, is Gen Z's interpretation of emo, like, we're your ancestors. We're fucking ancestors at this point. <laughs> oh, we're having sex with ancestors? <laughs> what? You're what? Ants, having sex with ants? <laughs> yeah, we're old, Christy. I don't want to talk about it. No, no, no. Speaking but no. of musical theater. No, but the emo. <laughs> so it, what's your interpretation of emo? I feel like emo now, it, I feel like emo used to think of like side swoop bangs, black lipstick. Like or super like, Yeah, hair. like very out there. I feel like emo now has kind of just become alternative and mm -hmm. there's like a bunch of different kinds of emo. Like I feel like I'm a little bit more of an approachable emo person. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of like, oh, she she's a little bit of a darker aesthetic. But like an Avril I'm emo? I'm not like frightening when you see me on the street. And there's some people that really love that, all the crazy makeup and right. the piercings, yeah. but it just depends on you and what you want to do as a person. But I love that it's so open now. And I think I'm kind of leaning more alternative. I always say yeah. emo just because I think it's funny, but <laughs> I'm definitely like a little bit on the alternative side. Yeah, but you're not playing an electric guitar crazy. for sure. Mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> do you like living here now? I mean, like, are you going to Sunset and going to like rock shows? Are you like, Ooh, in, like enjoying? Have you been to the Troubadour? Scene? Yeah. Oh, I Wait, actually that have been there. Troubadour closed, no. didn't it? I thought it closed. Oh, I hope I not. was there like. But oh, you're saying closed right now. <laughs> I gotta Google this. Um, oh, wait, that's your phone. Oh, but shit. are you gonna be performing anywhere like that? I'm sure. I want to. We definitely I have been talking to it, like with my agent and stuff, and seeing what opportunities are gonna be available. Mm -hmm. Just like starting in small places, because I did perform live on TV for the first time, and that was my first time ever really performing my own music live. So that was a really crazy jumping off point, and I was like, let's 
take a step back for a second and maybe do some things, get me more comfortable. Imagine that, putting her mental health before. I know, <laughs> right? Good. Yeah, that's, so, that's what they do nowadays. Oh, I, I'm so jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 